Well, hello there, guys. Uh, welcome to, I guess, June server rack update. Uh, I have a few things that I need to do, so I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Um, got drive, well, a drive to replace in here because the one's dud, uh, and then I'm going to add this one terabyte drive to it as well to use for local backup. I need to pull a 10 gig card out of here, so I'm just gonna start with that. I've already disconnected everything from around the back. And this, this is very hard to do one-handed because you need to undo this latch, push this back, as you would have seen in my overview video. So, as a reminder, or whatever to this system Oracle Sunfire X4170 Mark II dual Intel Xeon X5650 so two hexacores clocked at 2.6766 2.66 gigahertz uh, 96 gigabytes of RAM a start with the fiber channel card <laughs> it's a fiber channel card forgot which one uh, this is a uh, 10 gig NIC, which is actually what I'm pulling out, and a HP P410 RAID controller. I think this is the one thing that's different from when I showed the system in my overview. I had a LSI 9211. Because uh, I was using this under Proxmox, I tried it with ZFS uh, and it started gobbling a lot of RAM, even though I was using like was it 446 gigabyte discs it just literally started gobbling so much ram that it was stupid so I replaced it with an actual raid controller doesn't really matter because if this thing backs up at 6 a.m and 6 p.m um well backs up most of the machines anyway to the free nas box so i'm just gonna pull this out er, don't need it uh, as you can see, I don't have the bracket on them entirely because they were full height cards, not half height cards. So this is some HP card, um, 10 gig SFP plus, except it's not really compatible with what I'm doing. I'm getting some other uh, Intel X520 cards instead. Um, basically. This is base. It's a NetZen N3031, which is based upon a QLogic chip, and there's a Windows driver. Uh, there's a Red Hat driver. No free a bit free. Uh, no free BSD driver, so I immediately rules out using them with the FreeNAS box. And trying to get the Red Hat driver to run under Debian, which Proxmox is based upon, um, it's pretty much a no go. It just pretty much hates it. Um, got this little plate thing I want to try and jimmy back into here if I can. I've forgotten which way up it was. Uh, I'm going to guess it was that way. No. What did it come in from the outside? Uh, uh, you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> there we go. Just stop the bugs. Yeah, the fiber channel card. This is a Q logic, I believe. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll put it on screen if I remember. Uh, but four gigabit fiber channel. This directly connects down to my free NAS box. So I've got a fiber channel target set up on it. I was mainly testing it and ended up using it, um, even though I was going to redo something before I actually deployed it. So. Yeah, I think that's all I really needed to do in this system. So I'm going to stick the lid back on, plug it back in and get it to boot because I need to put a drive in and also put a second drive in and drop into the HP utility for the card. Woo! So systems back in the rack all plugged up, ready to rock. Need to replace this drive. Um, it's entirely a uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's 146 gig, 10K SAS drive, HP something or other. Whoa, hello. Do you mind? 
thank you. Um, I got all these cheap off eBay um, entirely because I only have three and a half inch SAS drives, so I needed two and a half inch ones for this. So I am just going to replace this with an actual Hitachi Sun one, also eBay special, perfectly fine. It's cheaper, it's literally just cheaper to go on eBay, pick these up for like 10 quid each when they fail, rather than actually go and buy a new one. Um, thankfully this also came with a caddy for £8.50 I think. So spent 17 quid, got two, so I have a, a spare. Uh, this one's got a slightly damaged caddy, but it's not a problem. So I'm just gonna leave that there. So I have a spare. Not gonna use hot spares, not a fan of it. Um, because you have a disc spinning in a system that's doing nothing, putting wear on the drive. So why not? Uh, why even? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this HP 18 of its caddy, use this one terabyte SATA drive, HDST. Um, it's my only HDST drive, surprisingly. Uh, apparently they're really, really reliable. And I'm just gonna stuff it in this slot, most probably, or one of these. Um, slot seven in the chassis, but most probably slot one to the card, strangely. Uh, yeah, even though in this system is numbered like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, the card's got it zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, which is strange. So yeah, these fillers are pretty nice fillers. Like normally filler ones are normally like trays themselves, like this one, for example. But it's a tray, but it has like this oh, plastic insert. As you can see, it's pretty dusty in here. Um, I've been doing some woodworking, which isn't the best of ideas. Well, I say woodworking, I did sort of cover things, but it kind of got in here. I'm gonna deal with that in a second. Um, but anyway, yeah, drives normally have like a tray you can pull out of them and use them as an actual caddy, but no, these ones are genuinely fillers. Woo! Those that haven't had the chance to play with some server gear, that's a SAS two and a half inch drive. That's a standard two and a half inch SATA drive. One's a bit chunkier than the other. That's certainly not gonna fit in your laptop. <laughs> so that's where I'm gonna stick it in this last one. Um, I'm not gonna put it in all the way because I know the HP controller is set up that when it finds a disc, a new fresh disc, to try and automatically rebuild raids onto it. Um, and I'm worried that because this it thinks slot zero is over here rather than here, that it might pick up the one terabyte disk before it picks up the 146 and try use this for rebuild. Which is not good because I want to use that for something else. So I'm not going to insert it all the way. I'm going to boot and go into the HP utility. Unlike every other raid card in existence though, uh, the HP one requires that you boot off a disc. It's the ACU or whatever. So, uh, yeah. Fun, fun. Boot. And hopefully this should swallow my disc. There we go. Boot. Boot. Come on. Um, interesting bug. <laughs> sure, I'd love to have the neck. Eight billion five hundred eighty-nine million nine hundred thirty-four five hundred ninety-two terabytes. Jeez, that'd be good. Anyway, after ejecting the disc and then shoving it back in, it's apparently rebuilding. But that is awfully concerning. Unless it's getting confused with the fiber channel. I don't know why it'd be doing that. Plus, the one terabyte disk isn't in there yet, so I'll push the one terabyte in and see if that changes anything. That changed absolutely nothing. 
Now, as you can see, that is rebuilding now. Wow, our focus blocked a bit too much. We have to see all the glorious LEDs. Woo. Due to the way the HP P410 Smart Array controller works, I've had to assign the one terabyte drive into its own logical pool. Um, just so I can get it passed through to the operating system, essentially. Uh, what I have done is I have disabled caching for this drive though, mainly so it can keep the performance on these on this RAID, uh, but also so that I know that data being stored is put straight through, pretty much. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's not going to be performance oriented, it's going to be having large writes done to it over a long period of time, so don't exactly want caching. Oh well. Seems to be getting on with this though now. If I quickly jump back to the logical view. Come on. You'll see it's rebuilding slowly. Hopefully this weird bug will disappear. Woo. So all appears to be good, well and happy. Uh, drive still rebuilding. One of the quirks is sticking the safety drive on a SAS controller. Indicators don't work properly. Oh well, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed and catch you in the next one. Bye.